I first became the artist on Daredevil because I had gotten either kicked off or I quit the X-Men. And I had this crossroads in my mind where I, I didn't know if I wanted to be a cartoonist anymore. I was really fed up with the industry. And it wasn't because of comics itself, it was personalities. The guys I was dealing with was, were boneheads, to say the least. At any rate, Ralph Macchio um, asked me if I wanted to do, do Daredevil, as simple as that. He said, it's a, it's a great character. And he says, you can do full pencils and do your own storytelling, do, you know, play to your strength. And that was it. It was simple as that. I was ready to walk from the industry at that time. So it was a nice... And that actually, to me, is a turning point in my so-called comic books career. I was ready to go at that point. Then working on Daredevil, I suddenly got invigorated and um, improved from then on. And I think it's got to do with the character. It's a very graceful character. I suppose it's the opposite of Spider-Man, who's awkward and gawky. But it's a graceful character. And uh, the costume reveals a nice... Uh, amount of muscle tone that you can play with and it's a simple costume with the two D's and I, I actually picked that character to be the most fun to draw out of all the characters I've drawn more than Spider-Man um, although the Punisher is a close second because it reminds me of my uncle the differences between my father drawing Daredevil and me drawing Daredevil is he's just a, a better artist than I am <laughs> I remember seeing it vividly the first uh, things he did when I was a kid, I, they stuck in my head, and he explained things to me. This guy's a blind lawyer. Wow, he's blind? I mean, being a kid at that age, you know, anything that is different was fun, and the fact that this guy's a superhero, surrounded by a whole bunch of guys, and not only that, but he's blind, I gotta hear more about this guy. So, in my mind, it started out as my father. By the time I got to the end of my hand, it was me. The only pressure I felt about being my father's son artistically, was self-imposed. Nobody else ever gave it to me. Uh, there were people, people made comments all the time when I was first starting. You're only in this business because of your father. You wouldn't be here because of your, without your father, you know. And, you know, after I got finished standing on their chest and, and punching and screaming, I, it, I ended up having to draw anyway. And I was in my own mind, I wanted to be as good as my father. And if, if you're going to strive to be better or as good as someone, why not strive to be somebody that's, that's great? Uh, so it was self-imposed, and yet it gave me a great incentive to work harder. I call my style the deadline style. Whatever comes out on time, that's my style. And that's, that's the truth, because I've always been so greedy. You know, you try and work fast enough to get paid the bills and so on, and I want to own, own a certain car. And I, I, if nobody else in the industry says this, if they all think that it's an important medium, that's cool. But it's a money medium. You know, you make money. It's part of the life. And I was, at the time, I was paying, getting paid nothing page-wise, just like everybody else that starts out. So you tend to, tend to work on speed. <laughs> Excuse me. You tend to work in, uh, with speed. That sounds terrible, too. Speed uh, is important to me. <laughs> Drugs have nothing to do with this. The quicker you are, the more money you make. So I, I only developed a style as far as how quickly I could work, whatever came out. That's all I was conscious of. I was never copying anybody else. I was trying to emulate my father, but that was impossible. You'd do anything every day for 26 years, 12 hours a day, you're gonna get good at it eventually. If there was a change in the way my artwork looked, it wasn't a, a, an effort, it just happened. And I hear that I have blocky looking characters and, and bulky looking characters. If that's the style, so be it. And if it's not consistent, again, I'm not conscious of it. So it might just be, what I ate on a Sunday, you know, and whatever comes out on Monday depends on what you eat over the weekend. Who knows? The greatest thing I, have, I think I ever, have ever done to this point, if you can call it great, was working on Man Without Fear with Frank. And it was originally slated for 64 pages. So I started working on it. And I, I was thrilled to death working with Frank because I had pretty much gotten into the business around the same time he did. And uh, his work was just fantastic. And as a writer, it's even better than his artwork. And... Um, it, it, it started out 64 pages. I got about 40 pages done. He says, I got an addendum. He calls me up and he says, I have an addendum. I'm throwing a couple of pages, which ended up being 80 something pages. <laughs> In between page 43 and 44, there was 80 more pages. It ended up being 144 pages, this thing. He says, listen, you won't see Daredevil in costume till the end of the book. And I said, okay, let's, let's go with it. And it was more fun and more rewarding than anything I ever did because it was, it, it was if there was ever a weakness in my storytelling, even to that point, it was flushed out working on this because you couldn't do anything but storytelling this. First thing is, as soon as the mortgage bill comes in the mail, my, my ass is just nailed to this spot. On a serious side, Jack Kirby said, sit down and do the work. 
and then stop. You're basically working on commission. Ask any commissioned salesman or any commissioned worker in this world what it's like knowing that if you don't work that day, you don't get paid. That's a scary feeling. And we don't get sick days because you work at home. You're supposed to be taking care of yourself. So I take the vitamins and I drink a ton of water. Although I do have to get up quite a few times during the day. When you drink a lot of water, you have to get up out of your desk.